Okay, okay, I clearly became obsessed with making these, but that's because I think they are super dope, perfect for fall, and they are extra simple to make. So even if you're a beginner, I think this one is for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's get into the supplies. First, you need six bandanas. You can get them from the beauty supply or Joann's or Hobby Lobby. And then you need the puff part. So you can find this type of polyfill, the premium polyester, pretty much anywhere, but that's not what you want. What you really want is the luxury down alternative one. You will not regret it. It's harder to find and more expensive, but I promise you want that one instead. And then you need some quilt batting for the straps. You'll need some sort of measuring tool, some scissors. I'm gonna be using this rotary cutter. You'll need some thread and something to mark the fabric with. I'm using this marking pencil made specifically for this. You'll need some pins and you'll need a loop turner. You can use a safety pin if you don't have a loop turner though. And then you need an iron. First start off by ironing every single bandana you have. This just makes the process way easier. After you've ironed them all, we're going to cut four of the pieces down to size. Those will be the actual bag. You can use the design as a guide for the size that you want. You can even sew it without cutting around the edges at all. But I wanted to make a smaller bag, so I'm using my rotary cutter to cut off the edges of only four of the pieces. So that way we can make the bag itself. Okay, I may struggle with explaining this part, but bear with me. You're going to take two of those pieces of fabric and put right sides together like this. Match them up evenly. And then what we're going to do is press an edge on them. Just one edge. This will be the top edge of the bag where the opening is. I like to press them at this stage because it makes it easier and neater down the line. So this might seem like it doesn't matter that much, but I think it's important to press it this way right now. And you're just gonna do this folding it towards the wrong side of the fabric. Fold it and press it towards the wrong side of the fabric. You're gonna do both pieces, making sure they are even, and then you're gonna do your other two pieces the same exact way. This is basically how it should look when you're done. And all you're gonna do is sew around those three edges. After you sew both sides of the bag, flip both of those pieces right side out, and then get your marking pencil. You're going to draw lines straight through the middle, going like a grid, like how this is here. And then you're going to sew the first one from top to bottom. Remember, this one is the top to bottom line. Do not sew the side to side one first. This is where you are going to start stuffing the puffer bag. Take your stuffing and put it all the way down to the bottom squares. This is where those lines really come in handy because you can clearly see where the limit is for that particular section. You can really add as much or as little stuffing as you want as long as it doesn't go past that line that you've drawn in the middle because we are going to sew right through that to create the pockets for the other two puffs. Once you're done stuffing those bottom two squares, you can go ahead and sew just a straight line side to side, just like you did from top to bottom. Okay. 
for the straps, grab those other two bandanas and I am measuring out five and a half inches in width. Each strip is five and a half inches and we will need six strips. So you can get four out of one bandana and then two out the other, but make sure they are all the same width. Once you've cut out all six strips, take two of the strips and put the right sides together like this and sew straight across the top. This is basically creating the longer straps. And you'll repeat this for two of the other strips that you just cut out, creating two longer straps. Head back over to the ironing board and we're gonna press the straps to make them easier to work with. I just press down the middle to make it neater and then you're gonna fold over all of the straps with the right side in and press them all the way down, all four straps. Like I said, this just makes them much, much easier to work with. Once you're done pressing them, you're gonna go back to the sewing machine and sew a straight line from top to bottom for all four straps, making sure that you leave both ends open. I repeat, do not sew the straps closed. We have to have them open to be able to flip them. For mine, I'm using this edge of my sewing machine to determine how wide each strap is so that way they're all even. So now it's time to flip the straps. I purchased this loop turner a while ago because dealing with safety pins can be difficult. You can get these for really cheap and I do recommend it because they are way easier to use than using a safety pin. But I'm going to still drop a video in the description that does a really good job of showing you how to use other tools to flip things like this right side out. It should look like this when you're done for all four straps. All right now, go ahead and get that quilt batting and spread it out. This will be the stuffing for inside the straps. Just use your straps to measure how long you need it to be. And then I use my loop turner, once again, you can use a safety pin, to pull it through all the straps. Now to be fair, this is low key trial and error because sometimes you will get stuff like this. But then you just push it back in there and you can start pulling it through. I twist it a little bit to make sure it's as flat and even as possible. This is absolutely optional, but I press my straps on a medium heat, not high because it will melt the inside, just to make it neater and easier to work with. Now that you have all four straps, we can map out how we're going to attach them to the bag. And this is where your ruler comes in handy. For my bag, I'm attaching my longer straps three inches from the edge. And it's up to you to determine how long you want those straps. Once you're done pinning, you can even hold it up to yourself to see if that's the length that you're aiming for, just to make sure it's right before you sew it. And you're gonna repeat this for both sides of the bag. It is crucial that when you're pinning the straps that you are only pinning them to one piece of fabric. Do not pin them to both sides of this part of the bag. You wanna make sure that they are only attached to one piece of fabric, not all the way through, as you can see here. Then for the shorter straps, I just put mine directly adjacent to the longer strap. So you don't really need to measure for this. You can just put those right next to each other and pin it the same way. Mm -hmm. 
once you're done pinning, we're gonna sew a seam right across the top, making sure you are not sewing both parts of the fabric together. I repeat, do not sew both sides together. You are just sewing the straps to the one side of the bag. We have to leave it open so we can put in the stuffing in the top two squares. If you're wondering, I use basically a half inch seam allowance on every part of this project. So when you're done sewing the straps on, it should look like this with large openings to put more stuffing in. As you guessed, it's time to stuff the top part of the bag. I'm just cutting off excess material from the straps just because you just don't need it and it's neater that way. And then you're going to take your filling and fill it the same way you did the bottom, leaving the top open. Once you're done stuffing, just go back to the sewing machine and sew a seam straight across the top through both sides of it this time. To close it off and this is how both sides of the bag should look for this part it's important for you to determine which sides you like the most because whatever side you think is the neatest because there will be a neater side put those neat sides together your favorite sides together so basically we're treating that like it's the right side of the bag put the right sides together and then we're gonna just sew all the way around the three edges. And as you can see, I finesse it just a little bit, holding them down, pressing them together while I sew bit by bit because all that stuffing can really kind of push the bag to the side if you don't manipulate it enough. At this point, all you have to do is flip that thing right side out and you are done. I really do love these tote bags. I think they're the perfect size. They're perfect for fall. And they are super easy to make. So even if you're a beginner, I think you can do it.